This is Alan Shea with Our Society. We're here in Pasadena at the Pasadena Convention Center at Monster Palooza. The line actually goes around the corner. It is so unbelievable. And I've just been informed it looks like it's going to be sold out. So definitely stay with us and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Alan Shea with Our Society, and we're here at Monster Palooza here in Pasadena. And we have two of the uh, great guests coming in. Why don't you share, share with us who you are and, uh, wow, who created you? Well, I am my own creator, but I am the keel holder of Davy Jones. I'm the one who deals out the punishment on the ship. Anyone steps out of line, they come see me. Oh, I see. <laughs> and who is this wonderful mate you have here? I am the drowned maiden that followed him along. Oh, my God. So are you from a character or a show? Or? No, nope, all out of my creation. Wow. So did you just get here to, uh, to the convention, or are you guys? Fashionably late. Nothing wrong with that, though. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to have a good time. Well, go ahead and enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, we're here with some more guests, and uh, they're going to share their names and who created this uh, great image here. Hi, I'm Alexandra Miller, and I am the Bride of Dracula. And this is my own creation. I did all the work. <laughs> I am Kurt Reichardt, and I am one of the faces of death. Well, why don't you share with the viewers uh, how far did you come, and when did you... Uh, uh, find out about uh, the event today and uh, how long did it take to get get here? Um, we came from Redlands, California, and I found out online and through friends. So this is up our alley, so we had to come and represent. All right. So. And, and what about yourself? <laughs> Same thing. Came in from Redlands and a little bit of a drive, but definitely worth it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a million dollar question for you uh, that the viewers wanted me to ask you because I just got a text from one of my producers over there and he says uh, they want to know how do you kiss her when she has uh, those kind of teeth? <laughs> well, very carefully. <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate it. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're just going to try and make sure we get all the, the great work here. Uh, we got a great piece. Are you able to talk there? He says no, he's not able to talk. How about you? Why don't you introduce who, they, who you are? The Bride of Frankenstein. And, and why don't you tell us, uh, how did you get excited about today's event and who did your uh, creation? Um, I did my creation, but um, I love Halloween, grew up with it, and this is life. So this is the reason why you come to Monster Palooza. And, and are you folks from around here, or how far did you travel? Oh, I live like 15 minutes away, so this is a perfect spot. And last but not least, so they'll know how how uh, social network or the, the media works. How did you guys find out about uh, uh, today's event at uh, Monster Palooza? I've been coming here for 10 years, and so now it's on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. So it's not hard to find. It's okay. an awesome place. So. Good. Well, we appreciate it, definitely. And don't eat too much dog meat. <laughs> the Trickster. Trickster, and you're from what show? No. No, you created I'm it. I'm just all? me. This is all you? Oh my god. And what about you? Sir, I know. And which show are you from? None. None? All right. And what about you? Hi, I'm Fagenstein. Uh -oh. and, and let's start with you, Fagenstein. Now, how, how, now, how did you come up with yours? Oh, you know what? About ten years ago, I was just a little Frankenstein, and I decided I wanted to throw some glitter and some eyelashes on and some heels, you know, some that cheetah print. So, you know, it's just I'm Frankenstein that came out of the closet. Hi. And what about you? How, how did you come up with your great uh, creation? Power of death. So are you on the dark side? Yes. Alright. And what about you? I've worked at a haunt for the last five, six years and I've just created my own stuff and now I'm me. Okay. Well, the viewers would love to know, how did you guys find out about today's event here in Pasadena? Uh, internet? Internet? My friend Missy, MM Fabrications, has a booth here. What about you? Um, well, I found out about this online, but I kind of use it like a Tinder because it's really hard to meet monsters. So, no, hi, oh, Grinder, Grindr. my bad. Oh, so this is like, hi guys, Fagenstein, find me on Grinder, looking for a loved one, someone to share compassion. I thought we were married. Oh, oh, I didn't know Where he was it? here. Oh, Lord Jesus. You can have your freeze. Oh, I just, I just found out on Facebook. It's just Facebook <laughs> events, Facebook events, that's it. I don't know. Oh, 
Well, I, I'm sure the viewers well, are gonna uh, love love your your show, and they're gonna they're gonna find yes, they're definitely gonna they're gonna show. you're right yeah. they're definitely gonna they're definitely gonna look you up. Are we still getting married? Uh, yes. Can I still get my ring? Only if, only oh. if he can be in it. All right. I still get my ring. Every All right. right. Well, thank you. Oh, thank, well, thank you. you. You you were wonderful. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right, we're back and we have two of the, uh, the elites here. Why don't you introduce yourself and who you are? I'm Mike Surratt. I'm with the Hollywood Ghostbusters. All right, and so uh, how long did it take you to get your outfit uh, composed here? Well, uh, the pack is actually borrowed from a friend who's, who's actually making my new pack. Uh, it took him probably about two years to do the whole thing. Um, and then the rest of this, I don't know, month and a half, two months just to buy everything. Okay, we want to share with the viewers your backpack and so they can see all the, the work that goes into it. It's about 35 pounds of wood and metal. 35, 35 pounds of wood and metal. Um, and a few signatures on there too. Okay. Wow, oh, and so so we have over here... Uh, is that Michael Mark? Jason? Jason. <laughs> Jason. And how far did you travel, Jason? He just walked. Jason walked, I tell you. So Jason is along with, and who, what's your name? I'm just the dead fisherman that caught Dory. Oh my God, and, and is that how you catch catch yeah. all your-, your... Oh, My son, and if you don't, I got some Nemo baits. If you want some Nemo right here, oh tastes very good. Uh oh. And so, and so how did you come up with your, your creation today? And I just wanted to catch something good today. Okay. So I just came from the bay, caught the fish, and then I know here, and I just came here right away. Wow. So, so how did you gentlemen find out about today's uh, Monster Palooza? How did you find out? <laughs> no, look, okay, how did you find out? I come here all the time. All the time, and how about yourself? A uh, friend of mine, one of my teammates. Okay, good, good. She's not here though. She's not here. <laughs> I wish she was. Well, we certainly thank you gentlemen for giving us some time, and we're gonna hope that uh, you guys enjoy your day today. Oh, all right, so, so we have another great creation here at uh, Monster Palooza. Why don't you share with the viewers your name and uh, who you are and, and who created this great masterpiece you have here? Oh, well, I'm Lupita Jimenez, and um, I do, I'm a self-taught makeup artist. Um, I do FX, I do yeah. just makeup in general, and I created all of this. Wow, and so is this a particular character, or did you just no. make this up? No, it's just a idea. I wanted to do a vampire, kind of like bride who got her heart ripped out. That's why I got my heart right here. Yeah. And, you know, she just is crying her eyes out. You know, it's like a sympathy, you know, that she has a lot of feelings, but that, like she wants to show it out with blood, you know? So why don't you share with the viewers where your studio is and how they can contact you? At and home. <laughs> um, just on my Instagram, um, Lupita Jimenez, or I think it's um, Lulu Disney Lover one two three four five six on Instagram. So it's really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. Well, it's very very it's good. Nice to meet and pleasure you. meeting you, Lupita. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> All right. We were able to capture the the king and queen of Monster Palooza, and we're gonna let them introduce themselves and uh, tell tell you viewers the characters they are and then their names. Hello, my name is Morticia Adams in the flesh, and I, <laughs> sorry, I'm Allison Kelly during my normal life. <laughs> okay, what about you? And day to day I'm Wyatt Dorn, but right now I'm Gomez Adams. All right. So why don't you share with the viewers, how did you guys create yourself? What did you, what was inspiring uh, uh, as far as getting you to, to get into a costume and outfit like this? You look wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we actually relate to the Adams a lot. <laughs> we feel like we, we pretty much are the Adams family in real life. We, we are a ooky, spooky, kooky couple. Uh, so I felt like, you know, kind of kind of fit with us. So. Wow. So does that mean you got the two kids like the Adams family? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no Wednesday in Pugsley yet, uh, you know. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I made my own dress and then he p pieced his outfit together at the thrift stores, basically. Wow. Okay, so how far did you folks travel? Uh, we're from Anaheim, California, okay. so not too far. Not too far. <laughs> and last but not least, the million dollar question, how did you guys find out about uh, Monster Palooza today? Actually, through mutual friends. We have a lot of friends that come to this event, so I, it just seemed natural that we would end up here at some point. <laughs> so is this your first time? Yes, okay. it is actually. Well, good. Well, good. well, hopefully you enjoy your stay here in Pasadena, and you guys look wonderful once again. Well, thank you. Thank you. Earth. Or Planet of the Apes. There you go. Planet of the Apes just landed. So we're going to try and find out 
What is your guys' secret of uh, finding out about Monster Palooza today? It's called the interwebs. You should try it sometime. <laughs> and how far did you travel? Uh, I live here in Los Angeles, so not very far. Okay. And what was the, what inspired you today to dress up uh, as one of the Planet of the Apes? Uh... We are group. We have a Facebook page, Planet of the Apes cosplay group, and we just love the original classic Planet of the Apes. And so we made all of our own costumes and did our own makeups wow. from head to toe. Wow. And yeah. so, and so, did you? Uh, work with a uh, factory and how did you go through all of the creation yeah. and, and the design? Well, my husband actually did the sculpt and then we uh, sent the molds out to have the foam latex run. Rob Berman did it. His father, Tom Berman, was here today on give a panel about Planet of the Apes. Because he had worked so, on the original movies and TV shows. That's kind of how it went. And they even brought the, the royalty in here. Dr. Zayas, yes. Yes, definitely. And how long did it take to put on your costume? Uh, mine was about an hour. I don't know how. You mean, you mean the, the appliance and the, the makeup? The appliance and makeup, about, because about a lot of the viewers would want to see really how do you get the, the mouth to work it, and play. It takes, and about, it takes about four hours to get the appliance painted, glued on, and then apply the hair to get everything and look just like this. Wow. Yeah. Well, so does yeah. she look better with or without the uh, makeup? I look better without it. Uh, okay. <laughs> How about you? I say I look better without okay. it. <laughs> and last, I look good anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate you giving us the time and make sure you guys uh, enjoy the We're rest. here with Magia FX and the creator and artist. Okay. Why don't you share with the viewers uh, your background and, and really some of your creative work here? Sure. I'm a 20 year veteran of special makeup effects and uh, I kind of specialize, I like to do makeup and monsters and masks and uh, I, I, I've been getting into a lot of replica work. So what you have here is a lot of replicas from movies that kind of got me into the business when I was younger and I was uh, really into. So I got I got replicas from American World from London and The Howling and this is from Twilight Zone and I also have my own original creations as well. Like this one's a, a cool little puppet that uh, you can play with and maneuver. Yeah, yeah. He's got the head going around, the jaw. So I see everything's sculpted, made with molds, and we'll make them out of different skin materials. All the hairs are individually punched in one at a time. There's a lot of labor involved. Wow. So why don't you share with the viewers, especially the young viewers, really, what were some of the ups and downs about getting into the industry, and how can they go about uh, becoming a, a, an artist like yourself? It, it's, a pa it's a passion project. It's, a, it's all about the love of monsters and the love of art. Um, it's a very competitive industry and competitive field. And uh, you got computers doing a lot of our work now, too. So um, you can't expect to do this and make millions of dollars or, or get super famous from it. You guys, it all comes from the heart. And quite frankly, the craftsmanship and time it takes to do all this stuff, it takes so long. You gotta be so dedicated. Um, so it really, it comes from within. And, and for me and most of the people that have lasted through the years, they're all kind of touched as a kid on some movie they saw or something and they kind of believed in that magic and that's kind of stayed with us through the years. So it's, it's a long haul and you gotta stick at it. Well, obviously we, we appreciate you because that sounds like a, a, a real commitment and as you've indicated, it may not be the most financial, but it could be the most rewarding. And certainly, how have the uh, industry received you as a artist when you were young and now that you're more seasoned? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's all about the love of, for this, the love of monsters. And that's why you're a monster palooza, right? <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate you giving us some time today. We're here with Michael Barnett, and he's gonna share with us how detailed you need to be to be a great artist. Well, what we're doing here is, uh, is a, a full face prosthetic. So I've got it all glued on and blended. And so we've got to be really careful to make sure that you can't tell where the prosthetic stops and her skin starts. So that's all blended. I've just got a real basic coat of makeup on there right now. Now I'm getting ready to go in with our, with our paints that are specially designed to go on this and it's waterproof. So when, if she sweats, it can last all day long. 
So I'm going to go in and do little veins and, and capillaries and, and paint in between her teeth and get all the detail to pop out. Okay, well, why don't you share uh, with the viewers what is the time frame to uh, complete this process because it looks like it's quite detailed. It is. Well, we've been doing this for uh, about 45 minutes, probably, something like that, and uh, I'm going to spend probably another half an hour to an hour. I could, I could spend longer, uh, but because of the time of our show, I'm going to cut it a little shorter. But normally, probably uh, two to three hours for something like this. And what about with the, uh, the appliances I see in her mouth, and how did you get that situated? Because it looks like it's a, it's a two-part phase. Well, yeah, that's the idea. The look, that's just that was done in the sculpting part. We actually, to to prepare for this, we sculpt it. Um, it's uh, from Anatomy Effects. It's a prosthetic that they sell, and um, so those were all sculpted ahead of time and run in foam rubber. So it it gives the illusion that her teeth are on the outside of her mouth. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. And so now, can she actually speak? Or, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't you share with the viewers your name and and how did you come about getting involved as the uh, model? Oh, well, my name's Daisy Hyder. I um, am friends with Michael, and he was like, hey, you want to be something scary? And I was like, yeah, please, and make she, me something scary. She's a, <laughs> she's a professional performer. She wears makeup for Halloween events, and she's a stilt walker. Yeah. And she's, and you got to be patient. you got to be able to, you know, let, let somebody pick at your face like this all day. you, you got to be a, the right person, and she's a great model, so I love having her doing Aww, it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and so ha have you done this before? I have. We did a really awesome Star Trek inspired um, alien last January for IMAX, so that was super fun. So we are, I think, a good team together. Yeah. So Mike, why don't you share with the viewers so they can know how to contact you, uh, or is there a school, or is there a process, or, or are you, how do you go about being, uh, getting in contact? Because I, I see there's schools here, uh, there's studios, uh, share with the viewers really you know, what, what are you here for today to make sure that you share with the viewers? Well, I like to, you know, I, I, I actually have a company that's called Fright Night Studios, and they can reach me directly at FrightNightStudios.com. I work with EBA. Um, if you if you want, I use all their products for my makeups. So that's why I'm helping them with the demo. So if you are if you're interested in, in these products and how to uh, how to use them, you can reach them at um, EuropeanBodyArt.com. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of schools and stuff. If somebody's really interested in getting into it, I love, you know, I started doing this as a kid. It was really hard. Nowadays, with the internet and, th and, and, and events like Monster Palooza that we're here today, there's a lot of opportunities for kids to learn. When I did it, literally, you know, when I was growing up, no internet, no, uh, you know, uh, no YouTube, none of that. And so I, I got everything that I, I learned from magazines, famous monsters, Fangoria, things like that. So there's so many more opportunities for people to learn now, and I think it's great. And that's what that's why we're here. I like to share it because I, I don't want to see this go away. I want inspired in fact i have a, a hi we're back with one of the vendors here i'm a uh, teacher at teacher the, yes okay. at the uh, stan winston school for character arts okay so why don't you share with the viewers really the creation here and and what do you teach at the school at the school there's there's many 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 different classes that are usually taught online and then later cut into dvds uh, and I just finished this class last Saturday. It was a two Saturday class where I taught how to do mechanical neck mechanisms for people that had uh, animatronic heads or the like that wanted to mount them. So why don't you share with the viewers, um, basically, how do you come up with these creations? Well, I've been doing animatronics for 20 years, so... Uh, we have to let everybody know what goes into this. Absolutely. So why don't you introduce your name and give us a little... History. My name is Ken. They know me as Ken Badger. That's not my last name, but no one would buy a Schlotfeld airbrush, so my father called it Badger Airbrush instead of Schlotfeld Airbrush. We're an American manufacturer of airbrush equipment uh, used for everything from special effects makeup to painting uh, fine-scale models and figures and stuff that you'll see here. So it's a great event for us to be at and show our wares and uh, get to shake hands with a lot of people who use our stuff already and uh, create a lot of great cool artwork with it. So wow, well, why don't you share with the viewers some of the great successful projects you guys have completed in the time you've been out here? Well, you know, we make the tools that the artists use, so we can't take all the credit other than making certain that the tools are of the proper quality so they can execute. You know, you've seen the body art uh, standing behind you uh, and the special effects art standing uh, to your right. 
someone like Pasher, who's an artist who uses our product, you know, can't do that without a tool that he can rely on to accomplish it. And we're honored to have our products in his hands. Well, so. we're going to go ahead and take a look at your products, starting with this young lady here. Why don't you share with the viewers your name and uh, what's the creation here? I'm Sawyer, and I am an ancient demon. Type. Right. Well, that is a beautiful ancient demon if I've ever seen one. <laughs> what about yourself? Uh, my name's Brian, and I am uh, the thing, like John Carpenter's the thing of the old school movie. Wow. Well, he looked like he got uh, bit a little bit there. Um, I'm a parasitic alien. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good. So why don't you share with the viewers the time and the process to create this, and how did you come up with some of the... Uh, creativity to add to specific placement and did you use glue uh, any use prosthetic okay well come on back let us know all right so basically we have uh, two different types of pieces this piece is all complete airbrush whereas Brian shows how the airbrush is great just for accents okay, okay. I did airbrush in the arm exactly, exactly and then this all body paint itself like with a paintbrush so so how did you get these things to stick on you and uh, this is body glue like a prosthetic adhesive I, but, I made these last night yeah but those what, are really coming out of him his skin is holding them in place okay <laughs> <laughs> but, but it shows that the airbrush can make uh, really gory effects but also very sexy couture designs as well they're still monster related so it's a good uh, you know compare, like contrast so why don't you share with the viewers the time it takes to prepare starting with him and then with her so the viewers can get a real sense of the time and the, the thought process because as an artist I'm sure you're putting some of your own touches into it oh, yeah well we started Brian at 3 30 3 3 a.m. 3 15 a.m. Yeah. 15 AM this morning and we painted until around uh, 9 o'clock and then we started painting here at 11 o'clock yeah, exactly. and that went until maybe like an hour ago which is what time I don't even know what time it is right now about four hours about Chicago about, time or California about four time. hours about five and a half hours four, four, that was five and a half hours five. and she was you were four? four wow but the thing is is that you, if you have a reliable tool like the badger tools uh, it takes four hours instead of eight hours it's like they work and it makes your life so much easier uh, well we were really looking forward to meeting uh, with your organization because we kind of uh, pinpointing some of the more integral parts of today's events that a lot of people wouldn't know unless we got the interview. So we want to make sure we covered your your product and uh, what you guys do. And we certainly appreciate Thank it, you your artwork. Out. And Honored definitely, absolutely, you guys look great. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll do that. in. All right. We got a whole group. We finally made it to Cinema Makeup School booth. We've been looking for you guys all day long. We didn't know you were so far over in the west, or I should say east corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask that you introduce yourself and give the viewers a sense of the process of being creative. Well, I am the female gremlin, Greta, um, and it's a very long process. I know my makeup artist spent about a month and a half sculpting all of this, running molds, doing stuff. And we started applying at 10.30 this morning, and we finished at maybe 3. So it, it took a while, but here I am. Wow. So she. So for those of you viewers who didn't hear her, she, she said she started at 10.30 this morning putting on her makeup. And she just completed about uh, 3.30? 3. 3, 3, 3 o'clock. So that shows you what goes into creating such detail. I mean, the eyes and the beauty and the sex appeal that she has. So we want to make sure the viewers understand how important it is. Now, here's another gentleman I want to share with them because it looked like he had a late night last night with his girlfriend and she, she kind of wanted to bite your neck. Huh? <laughs> I'm Jack from American Werewolf in London. So that's my character. I'm, I'm the victim. Of a, of a werewolf attack, so I kind of got something in my throat right now. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you share with the viewers how long your process was and uh, how did it uh, work to have all of these details done? Because you got a lot of details on your face. Yes, uh, it's mostly the same as her. We started about 10:30 this morning, and it was just about the same time that it take that it took. Uh, these are all different pieces. Uh, they're separate pieces glued together into one. So it was a lot of it. It started at the neck and then just cut, and it went over the eyes. So it's it's a long, long process. So I'm assuming the werewolf is where? Right behind oh, Okay, you. well, we're going to go over to the werewolf. Oh, my God. Well, come on in, Mr. Werewolf, so, so you can share with the viewers. 
your name. Okay, and the man who, is this the man who created it? Well, we're gonna bring Hello. him in. Why Hello. don't you share with us the process for the werewolf? Well, it's a lot of work. You take the live cast, you sculpt the pieces, you make the molds, make the teeth. I made the hands too, you know. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. So now, are these actual gloves that he's, he has those on? Those are or? gloves, yeah. Those are gloves, okay. And so as to the makeup, as far as the eyes, how did you how did you bring that to light? Well, this is a uh, scleral lenses. Scleral can't be very, very big. You know, they fill out the whole eyes. So has to, they say when you change the eyes of someone, that is what really changes the person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it works. And so what about, did you give him dancing lessons too? Well, he is actually a Michael Jackson impersonator, Pete yeah. Carter. Okay. And he has all the moves, and I figured since I'm doing a Michael Jackson makeup, I get someone who can dance like him. Okay, yeah. well, he's going to show us some of his moves. Yeah. So go ahead, Mike, hit it. Wow, well, let's give him an applause, everybody. Wow, we, we, we got a show over here. So we would love, we would love to thank uh, Cinema Makeup. And where's the, this is the young lady who we met last night. Yes, we did. And great, great work you were doing last night. And I'm so glad you invited us again today to be here. And you do have a wonderful, wonderful school. Why don't you share with the viewers how they can contact the school and what, what drew you to the school? So you can contact the school. We do have a website, cinemamakeup.com. You can also send us emails at info at cinemamakeup.com as well. Um, and I got into the school just because I loved watching horror movies as a kid. So I wanted to be behind the scenes in that. Yeah. Well, you've done a great job, and I'm so glad we met last night. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> and no oh, final booth of the evening here at the convention center at Monster Palooza getting ready to close out the show, but we want to save the best for last. So why don't you share with the viewers your name and the name of your company and give us a little bit of background because you have such an interesting story, especially with what's behind us. Hi, my name is Miss Scarlett. I'm the owner of Dirty Lola. I make antique plates from my artwork. Um, I'm mostly influenced by pop culture art, mostly music musicians that I love, like David Bowie, Prince, Kiss, many, many more, um, and I just basically come up with ideas of painting them in different realities, and that's pretty much it. So why don't you give us a little uh, background on the, uh, the pictures that we see here? So um, Beetlejuice, for example, um, is for me the quintessential uh, gothic characters from, from Tim Burton's movie, and I thought it would be a fun parody to paint them as American Gothic. Um, so that's what this is all about. And then I just have an obsession with religious imagery and saints. So um, actually I painted this before David Bowie died and it was just because I have always idolized him and looked up to him and then he passed away and unfortunately he became a saint. So. So, so did this as a result of David Bowie passing away, did this have any uh, increase in value? I mean, not for me because it was no different to me than you know him alive or dead. It was the same same idolization that I had for the man, but maybe for other people. <laughs> well, we, we certainly appreciate your time. We we see we have people uh, coming in between our, our interview, but we definitely thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>